In today's video, we're gonna go check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. There's something absolutely insane that everybody needs to know immediately about this upcoming total solar eclipse. That being that the sun and the moon are not actually due to align during this total solar eclipse. And if you notice on any star maps or even sky view in itself, if you fast forward to where the actual eclipse is, you'll notice that they are not in alignment. So could it be Planet X, AKA Nibiru? Who knows? But what I do know is that the sun and the moon have been out of alignment since September of last year. And if the sun is in Pisces, then obviously it won't be an Aries eclipse, now will it? This just adds to biblical proportions, especially when you consider the mentions of Wormwood in itself in the past. So could the Anunnaki and Project Bluebeam finally be amongst us? Who knows? But there do happen to be a lot of events occurring in the month of April alone, including two broods of cicadas that haven't managed to emerge since 1803 directly in the totality of the total solar eclipse. Our leaders have been quite literally capable of producing a vast amount of future technology that they are slowly introducing to the public. And still, people still choose to be so closed-minded. I don't have to be an astrophysicist to notice something so obvious. This is not a normal total solar eclipse, people. Please get in touch with your reality around you, the actual reality that exists around you. There has been many bloodlines that have existed for far too long with only corrupted intentions of deceiving you further. And if humanity does not become mindfully aware of the actual reality around them, then humanity will simply cease to exist, leaving this beautiful green realm in the hands of our oppressors, our actual oppressors. Two deities, the son of an even greater deity, created humanity, the only mortal species in our galaxy meant to consciously evolve. But guess what? One deity under the name of Enlil wanted to take control of humanity. And Lil, you know, aka Baal, Beelzebub, Nimrod, Zeus. And we as humanity are consciously evolving faster than they would like. They are losing their control. Reasons of why so many tyrannical characters in our society are falling ill or going into hiding. Because they know the truth. They know the truth behind their veil of lies will finally be revealed to the people. Reasons of why their exact ancestors are returning to regain that exact control. And I implore you to think outside the box. I implore everybody that's considering to go to this eclipse to not actually go to this eclipse. Because it's not hard to comprehend the simple fact that once again, the sun and the moon are not due to actually align during the total solar eclipse. Could that be why there's so many military personnel? Could that be why they're telling people to gather so many supplies? And you might just like to assume that that's just because there's going to be a lot of people there. But in actuality, they've never done this before. Wake the fuck up, humanity, or soon it will be too late. This is pretty interesting, and he does bring up some good facts, but I would like to know, because I'm completely ignorant to this, how does he know that the sun and the moon are no longer in alignment? How does how does one know that? Is there some kind of graph online that shows or tells you that? Because I truly do not know, and I would like to know. So if any of you have any information on this, leave a comment down below letting me know, because I'm curious on how this individual got that information. Okay, so I'm currently driving to work, crying. But it's not even because, it's not even because I don't like what I do, or I'm not grateful, but I feel like anyone who's in their early 20s is like, <laughs> like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, it, we, we like, are growing up in a world that's like practically falling apart and it's so hard to stay positive when kind of everything's thrown at you. <sighs> I feel like obviously college doesn't teach you much. I'm not even looking at the camera, shit. Um, but I'm like, also I'm a, I'm a, a man and I, I am scared to cry and I'm scared to film and I'm scared to be vulnerable. But at the end of the day, it's like, Right now it just sucks and it's hard and I'm beyond grateful for the job I have and for the life I'm living but I um, I hold a lot in and I think at the end of the day it's okay to let it out and be honest with people and um, yeah it's just been a lot on my plate and I hope I don't know if anyone else can relate to it but um, if you're in your early 20s and you are a male or a female or whatever your pronouns are um it's hard uh but we all make it through i know i know that um but at the end of the day it's it's okay to feel things it's okay to feel emotion and pain and be vulnerable and talk to people if you need to talk to people 
Um, yeah, uh, I just thought I would share this, I guess. It's, <laughs> I don't know um, if anyone relates. <laughs> yeah, we're all good. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people really break down like this on social media and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I'm all for one for you to express your feelings. I often wonder is social media one of the reasons why we are as emotional as we are now because we can actually feed into that system to gain support. I'm not trying to cut this individual down by all means. I just feel like now that we have a lot of social media, a lot of people on social media, we can just put our feelings out there and we're not as secretive about our feelings. And there's nothing wrong with crying or letting your emotions out. I think that's completely and totally fine and I'm glad people are doing it more. I wish him the best of luck because there's a lot of people out there that are like this and it, it's not easy out there. And the more you get into it, the more you accept it, which is not necessarily a good thing, we definitely get used to it. Let me know what you guys think about this situation, whether you think that maybe this guy is just being a big crybaby or you think he's right and we need to have change. We need to definitely be on a different path. We definitely do need to be on a different path. Fuck the system that we live in, bro. Like, we fucking go to work eight hours every single day, 40 plus hour weeks, and then what we make, the government fucking taxes us on it. And it's like, why are you taxing us when you print six trillion dollars every single year? Like, if you can just print money out of thin air, why do you have to take money out of my pocket? And then also, with fucking inflation going up, I have to pay fucking rent. Rent is fucking through the roof. Fucking freaking food. Food is fucking like $20. $20 if you want to go to fucking like a fast food place. Like what the fuck is that? Like isn't that supposed to be cheap? It, it, it's not anymore. It's fucking stupid. And then you're trading so much time to work a job. And then with all that money they tax you. You can't afford anything. And then you're pretty much just living paycheck to paycheck. And you can't live the life that you want. Which I never saw the reason of doing. Like you only have one life. Why am I going to do something that makes me miserable? And why am I going to trade 40 hours to a job where the money that I get. I can't even do shit with it. All I can do is pay my bills. Like it's fucking stupid. And that's the main reason why I made a change. And that's that's why I started looking into how to make some extra money when I see that people are making stupid amount of money only using their phone. So I was like, how are these fucking kids doing it? And then two or three months ago, I started looking into that. And since then, I completely replaced my income. And now I'm doing that full time. And I'm just so grateful. But still, when you just look at it and you're like, holy fucking shit, the system that we're living in is such a fucking rat race. And the people that are working every day are just slaves to the system. Because it's like, when you can make this type of money only working an hour to two hours using your phone, you're like, why the fuck would I work a job for 40 50 hour weeks and make fucking less than people that are working an hour to two hours every single day only using their phone. Like, it makes no sense to me. Other than the vulgar language this individual was speaking, hopefully this guy can share his secrets on how he's making this much money just being on his phone. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you see this graph here, you'll see that 28% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed to my channel, while 71% of the viewers that watch my content are not subscribed, but keep coming back for more of my content. So to the 28% of the viewers that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being subscribed. And to the 71% of the viewers that are not subscribed, I appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. This witness has been dealing, ongoing, dealing with these shadow beings in his home. He's recorded multiple videos of them. Some people think it's fake. Some think that he's just hoaxing everybody. But honestly, this is a real deal. Take a look at this footage as he's following this thing around the basement and how it moves and quickly it disappears. It's more than just a poltergeist. This is a true shadow being that's on our plane of existence and it shouldn't be. It's scary and it's terrifying and things are escalating within his home. Take a look at this. Oh, here he is. Okay, we're gonna catch him. And take this time. Can you tell me what you want? Yeah. And he's got it. He's got it. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? You back there? I see you, buddy. 
Can you tell me what you need? Oh, he does not like the light. I don't need to use the light, ma'am. You, I don't need to use this light. I'll, I'll put the light away. He wants to play. How do you do that? Can you please? Wait a second. Just, oh, okay. That's not fun. <laughs> Man, if I experienced paranormal or extraterrestrial or interdimensional things like this, I would be extremely fixated on catching it because that was some of the most realistic looking work I've seen. If that was fake, very well done. If it, if it's real, very interesting because that is really crazy to me. Like you could literally see the shadow peeking around the corner and he could get so close to it before it just disappeared, but it did not look CGI at all. I would like to do a little bit more deep dive on this individual, maybe get a better understanding of what's going on here, or is it just a fake and I'm completely blinded by its foolery because that looked really real. These are the craziest bits of news from the last month that you won't see on the TV. So a new study has been done which has said that eating instant noodles two or three times a week is linked to an increased heart disease, diabetes or death. So yeah, if you're eating noodles while you're watching this video, put them down and put them in the bin. There is an eclipse happening on the 8th of April all across the US and it's been in all of the news across the world saying how bad this is going to be. But as far as I remember, the last time there was an eclipse I was going out with the little glasses on just chilling like, is it really that bad? But this has caused a lot of speculation, people online saying what is going on, is it a cyber attack? Is I don't know what's going on. NASA wants to inject millions and millions and millions of tons of ice into the atmosphere to tackle climate change. Now, this may seem like a good idea, but it has some pretty bad side effects and consequences. Like it could, you know, freeze the atmosphere, cause a deep freeze, and we get put into like an ice age. But, but yeah, this is going to cost billions, and I don't know how they're going to do this, but they're proposing it. If it gets approved, I'll let you know. GTA 6 is now apparently postponed until 2026, so I'm not even going to flip and play it anymore. An astronomer found this strange beam of light going across the telescope when he was looking at the moon the other day. Now, people have said it could be a bug going over the lens, but it's not possible because the lens was focused and didn't unfocus, and it's going way too fast to be the ISS space station. The UK have put some pretty crazy laws in over the last month, which is great, including if you rent a property with someone, landlords now can kick you out if you have, say, in the house they've literally said you're not allowed to so like what it was announced in breaking news after all the speculation that princess kate does have cancer and is undergoing treatment and apple have come out with some big announcements saying watch out if you've got a yellow dot in the top of your screen they've also been sued for being too good like literally they have been sued by the u.s government because they're being a monopoly just not sharing any of the phone market with anyone else that's basically the main stuff make sure you hit that follow button and i'll keep you updated you can just tell that it's not good for you so so that's not a big surprise. I had a video of this guy talking about no sex in the UK and a lot of people said that that wasn't true and it's just clickbait. So I'm not even sure if that's real because people from the UK are saying that that's absurd and not true at all. So again, if you want to validate for me, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this because it's a lot of information. Hey friends, so I did that video the other day about the metallic spheres buzzing the planet, how is a planetary defense network set up by the Atlanteans, this leftover, you know, AI technology from past um, advanced human civilizations, and all that. <laughs> and I had a lot of people comment and say that, you know, oh, you mean like those light orbs that we're seeing everywhere? And I was like, okay, now's a perfect opportunity to do a video about the differences between these light orbs, these, these balls of light that everyone sees, they're everywhere, have been forever, and the metallic spheres. Uh, one quick caveat, um, the metal metallic spheres can do something called quantum tunneling, which means that they can sort of dematerialize and go through walls and that kind of stuff and then rematerialize. But they're still material objects that are, um, have terrestrial origins made on earth by human species. They're just very advanced and ancient. Um, but they can appear kind of magical sometimes because they can use you know quantum physics. Anyways, the light orbs is something totally different, okay? So light orbs are spirit energy. Um, a lot of the information I'm about to give you is pulled from the masters. It's pulled from Chris Bledsoe's experiences. I'm gonna show some of his pictures because they're just amazing. You can actually see faces and likenesses in these orbs. Um, it's also pulled a lot from Robert Monroe, 
who probably knows more about this than anybody in the history of the planet, and also Dolores Cannon, some of her fascinating um, teachings, and uh, Michael Newton, one of my favorite people ever. These people know a lot about spirit energy and what these orbs are. So this isn't just some crazy guy in the woods. Um, anyways, so this is spirit energy. The light orbs are spirit energy. It's what we would call angels, okay? It's the actual pure source of consciousness. These things are like ascended master spirits, essentially, that are here with the purpose of helping guide us through this tipping point <laughs> that we're at now as a species. We're at a very pivotal part of the experiment here, where it's either we, you know, do what a lot of previous civilizations done, is where we get to this technological singularity point and we destroy ourselves, or we ascend and we basically avoid all the pitfalls, prove that we're mature and move on. What these spirits, these cherubs, these, these light orbs are trying to do is help guide us, okay? So Dolores Cannon had a fascinating past life regression with this guy who said basically this was how it was all broken down to him and this really jives with Michael Newton, Robert Monroe's teachings is that these light orbs are basically rovers. They're, they're hovering all around Earth looking for particular things. Now, what are they looking for? They're looking for openings in people because what they do is they spark off a little piece of divine intervention into certain people with the um, objective of having that person have an awakening, enlightenment, and, and turn into a light worker, which is basically going to be a soldier for good, a, a person who's going to be helping lead us through this ascension revolution. So it happened to me, I swear to God. I mean, when I had my near-death experience, before that I was, I was not the way I am now, okay? Let's put it that way. And I don't know how to explain it, but just something snap something changes something just in the, in the blink of an eye your mindset changes so the way he was told this is that basically you know they work within the rules of the universe and and reality and how karma works and everything they know that when you enter into this vessel this human body you choose it because of certain experiences and life paths that you're going to have um knowing that ahead of time so they can't negate your free will and they can't come in and they can't change that without your agreement so there actually is this like soul contract sort of like a, a negotiation a, an agreement that they sign where you're like okay you're still you you're, you're still your personality everything still stays the same but we're going to come in and we're going to make a, a mindset shift a mindset change because it's needed right now um, to help you out on your life path that's why a lot of times it happens when people are in dark places and then also to help humanity out, okay? Because we're trying to navigate through this minefield and they call it closing the chasm. So there's this chasm that always happens in the development of species where they do what we're doing right now. They get really smart, really advanced, and then they're like, oh, let's make a bunch of weapons and kill each other. So that's the kind of point we're at now and they're trying to prevent that so that we can ascend on. We still have free will, so we might still go down that negative path, but they're trying to guide us to the positive path. So these light orbs that we're seeing everywhere are these like rover spirits that are here guiding they're here monitoring they're here nudging so they can't make us do anything they can't force us to do anything but they can help okay and that's what they're doing and that's why we see them you know and, and people have this i don't know they have this feeling of like trust and love and respect and like it's it's hardly ever a bad thing now there are negative spirits out there okay i'm not gonna lie and everything has this form this shape and look of a, of a light anytime you're not in your physical body anytime you're not in this you know focused in this vr headset like we've talked about this this meat suit here playing the simulator um you appear as a ball of light okay that's just our natural conscious state um different s different spirits are going to be different hues different intensities different sizes depending on your your um progress and your ascension level but that's how we all look when we're not in this body our consciousness our spirit just looks like a ball of light okay so there's good and bad and all that kind of stuff, obviously, just like everything. But the ones that are most prominent, the ones that everyone is seeing, the ones that really we need to be paying attention to are these helpers. They're what we're called the cherubs. They are what we would call angels. They are divine, higher tier, <clears throat> you know, um, helpers, guardians. And they are here to guide us through this tricky <laughs> ascension tipping point. They call it closing the chasm, okay? so. It's super fascinating to me because I went through an enlightenment period, which was wild at my, 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 the darkest point of my life turned into the brightest point of my life. And when this guy was talking about <clears throat> that these, these light orbs basically like 
will splinter off, will spark off a little spark of light that enters into somebody, you know, and guides them through this like enlightenment transition. Um, I was like, wow, you know, that really makes sense. Like that, I don't know, it resonated with me. It hit me differently, you know, and a lot of people have, have told me the same thing. So I think that's super fascinating. Um, so anyways, that is a quick different differentiator. There's so many different ways we can go with this and I could talk about this for hours, but to keep it, you know, concise, that's kind of the difference between the, the metal spheres, all right, I'll call them spheres, the metal spheres that seem to be remnants of like an ancient Atlantean type um, species. These were like an AI type planetary defense network that's still active today um, using obviously some sort of uh, energy from the ether. And then we have these like translucent balls of light that is pure spirit energy, which are these angels that are helping us. I don't say angel in the biblical sense, meaning it's a religious thing. I mean, this is what, when this is where the word angel came from. This is what these people were seeing back in the day. This is where all this stuff comes from. They've been here forever helping us, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> and every once in a while, they not only just help you, but they're roving around searching for certain things. And when they find you and you have your open sign on and you need help and you're receptive, they can put a spark into you <clears throat> that not only helps you, but helps all of mankind going through this this crazy period that we're in and closing the chasm is what they call it. How fascinating is that? Let me know. What do you guys think of all this? Have a beautiful day. Peace. I really like the idea that a lot of these UFOs and sphere shaped objects are from like Atlantis. They're old, old technology. I think that's really neat. And they're just still wandering around today. Awesome, awesome theory. I really enjoy that. But I also like this theory that the smaller lit up orbs that we see could potentially be angels. Now, I know this guy said that not in the biblical sense. I do believe that those could be a totally different entity. They could be a different creature. They could be an angel like this individual said, and they're also just scouting around and just seeing if everything is working properly or if people need certain types of help or whatever it may be. They could be reporting to God for all I know. I find that really cool as well. So let me know what you guys think about this theory. OCD is a demonic disorder. I didn't know this until I got therapy, but OCD has different subtypes. One of them being pure O. When most people think of OCD, they think of physical compulsions, like checking your door 10 times, washing your hands. But pure O, created by Lucifer himself, the compulsions are purely mental. For example, back in 2020, my OCD convinced me that someone very close to me did something very bad to me, but I just don't remember. I then spent months every single day going through every memory I had with this person, mentally ruminating, checking, nonstop. This is especially demonic because when you have this mental experience, it's hard to decipher, is this OCD or is this a valid thought? Pure O is actually what almost took me over the edge and thankfully led me to therapy because it may not sound like a lot if you've never struggled with it, but when you have your own brain convincing you of a falsified reality, you not only lose touch with reality, but also with your sense of self, with the people around you. So I'm so thankful for intensive OCD therapy. And I did mine back in 2020 with no CD. Who is the sponsor of this video? They were like, hey, do you wanna make a video about pure O? And I was like, put me in coach. Cause that shit almost mm, took me out. So if you think you're struggling with OCD, whether it's pure O or another subtype or several subtypes, you can get specialized treatment from NoCD at NoCD.com. Do any of you guys have OCD like this or do you have any kind of OCD? Like what type of OCD do you have if you do? And how does it affect you in your day to day? Does the Vatican run the world? Figure this out. Most people don't digest this. They're the largest single stockholder in the world. They own the most property in the world that pays no taxes. Every school, every Catholic church. I mean, there's an organization a lot deeper than them called the Solidarity. I'm not familiar with that. Well, nobody the Solidarity. Is. It's about 2,000 year old club. It's a club. It's a club. And it's in the catacombs of the Vatican. You know, the Vatican's a city when it's in itself. I know. I used Just to live like right people. next to it. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Then you know. I mean, I don't know like most that. Pe most people don't know what I'm telling you. So they meet down there, you're saying? Oh, they're such that's where they are. They only meet there, period. Right. Okay. They're very high level profile people throughout the world. You get invited to be in it. Who's running the world? I think they are. Wow. When you think of what they control and what they do, they, they it's it's amazing. I have my suspicions that the Vatican also runs the world. I would love to visit 
the Vatican, especially what they have in their archives. I want to know so bad. I would be a nosy neighbor. So Stephen Gray said that the huge UFO that had a building built over it was in South Korea, and it is more or less being confirmed that that is the location, and the reason for the national security issue is because of North Korea. Because if North Korea was to find out that South Korea has a UFO hidden, they will go and invade that country. They will go straight in. They will not think twice about it. Kim Jong-un will go straight in there. So we were trying to guess where this was and it was a laudatory places. Well, apparently this place is a laudatory place. It is used for multi-purposes. <coughs> and it's been built specifically just for um, this UFO to be kept hidden because it was, it, it was brought down in the mountains and they couldn't move it. It was too big. So Stephen Gray was telling the truth, it looks like. Just developments that have been coming out over the last couple of hours saying that it is because of the national security risk, which is from North Korea. I'm going to do a bit more digging on it, so there'll be updates on this, but just letting people know quickly what is happening with that location. Uh, that's pretty interesting. This was only uploaded about four hours ago, so I would like to see the follow-up to see what more they have to say about this, because I'm curious myself. What do you guys think? I'm sorry, but what the hell is going on? Nah, nah. Pretty sure everyone knows what a solar eclipse is, but I mean, you can read the article. Now, on the 8th of April, there is going to be a full solar eclipse across the US. But there are tons of articles and people online saying how bad this is going to be, how, like, damaging the 8th of April is actually going to be. Now, in the UK, there's been partial eclipses, but there's not been a full solar eclipse since 1999, which is what's happening in America on the 8th. The UK, we're not due one until 2090, which is probably a good thing if this happens. So there are tons of articles and news reports coming out from major news channels and trusted sources in the US, UK, all across the world saying how awful this is going to be on the 8th of April and probably cause thousands of deaths. What? Remember, you go out and watch the eclipse, put the little glasses on, chill, just enjoy watching it, right? Apparently not. They are saying this is going to be absolutely horrific, so everybody needs to prepare or stay at home. Now, a lot of reports are saying it's because of car crashes, because people won't be able to see when it happens, even though it'll probably only happen for like one minute, but still, I can kind of see that angle. But yeah, is America extremely overreacting to this? Is it going to be completely fine, or is something bigger going to happen? I don't know, but make sure you hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. I don't know. It's supposed to last like five to eight minutes, but I'm not sure what the big deal is necessarily and why we really need National Guards and things like that. I get that there's going to be a lot of hazards on the road. People probably are going to have a hard time seeing during this eclipse, but to say it's going to be this serious... That's kind of concerning a little bit, and it's getting more and more talked about as we get closer to that date, which is not very far away at all from, from now. I'm interested to see what the outcome is. It's not actually in my line of sight, so I won't even experience the eclipse, and I'm not traveling to it either. But I am going to be very on the lookout when it happens, because I would like to know. Let me know what you guys think about the solar eclipse. Do you think anything really is going to happen? Or do you think that it's just going to be a standard solar eclipse and people are just blowing this out of proportion for like marketing purposes or clickbait even? Don't you find this a little crazy? That we have this ancient order that we historically can verify has been around for a bare minimum accepted scholarly, you know, they only go by what you can actually prove. They've been around at least 400 years, right? We're talking this text came out in 1909. Or was it 1909? 1911, rather. Either way. Dude, they're talking about the age of Aquarius as a matter of fact. So far in advance of everyone else hearing about it in the 1960s saying like, Oh, no, no, listen. There's going to be an age when we all awaken. When we all have these spiritual powers and abilities. And we all have this closeness and higher knowledge and resonance with God and we're going to be able to use these powers and we have to do it with love or it'll be like, and it goes on to say, you know, like, um, in a different text from the same author, I'm going to, I'm going to show you where he talks about some of the Atlantean powers and how, you know, it was out of control and things like that. But mm. I just find that so weird. I don't know. 400 years is not 1911. I don't know if he was talking about this organizations been around for 400 years and they talked about it in 1911 but there's a difference hey and if i gain spiritual powers due to this event i'm i'm here for it let's see what happens my top four signs your mental health is getting worse number four 
you're experiencing low energy most of the day on most days. Life seems like an endless struggle. You're operating on low fuel, but it's just enough to get you by. However, no matter what you seem to do, your energy levels don't come up. Your mental health continues to suffer because you have so much to do with so little energy. Then you experience guilt for having such low energy. Number three, activities that used to bring you pleasure and joy no longer do. This confuses you because you're trying to make yourself feel better, but nothing seems to be working. This leads to a feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. Number two, you're either undersleeping or oversleeping on most days. This means you're either sleeping for over 12 hours a day or under six hours a day. You're probably trying really hard to get a good night's sleep, but your mind just keeps on racing. The more you try to fall asleep, the worse it gets. It feels like a never ending cycle with no end in sight. And the number one sign that your mental health is getting worse is that you've been isolating yourself from friends and family. You want to connect so badly, but you end up isolating yourself, which only increases your feelings of loneliness. He pretty much referenced a couple of few things that really are an effect to my life. I don't know if it's because my mental health is getting worse. How about you guys? Do any of you guys have any of these problems or am I just the only one? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.